Matt, this is kind of off the reservation, but have you had any discussions with Tony Bennett at Virginia? Um, I talked to him the night we got beat. Really? And talked to him, and we texted each other. So, it, misery loves company, right? Yeah. So, no, just obviously he experienced that, but you know what stood out to me was more of what he just went through. They had just gotten beat by Furman oh, yeah. on a real tough play. You know where they, you know, they were in control of the game. They were late and had a costly turnover, and it was tough. Um, so for him to think about us when, you know, when it happens to you, you know, it's a pretty big hole in your stomach because you work so hard to get yourself in great positions, and then, you know, but there is another team out there. But yeah, but uh, we've definitely discussed things. He reached out to you. Yeah, he reached out to me right after the game. Yeah. He said, hide the sharp, sharp objects. <laughs> did no, you, he, he didn't say did, that. <laughs> <laughs> but make for a good story. Did you, did you have to, though? Yeah, at times, like, you just, you know, because you, you spend so much time, you know, you know, just preparing and getting yourself ready and going through things. And obviously, we've been in that position before and had success, and we've been in that position before and not had success. And so, like, all those experiences weigh on you. So you just try to do everything in your power to prepare your team. So when you, you know, have a loss like that, it's just, it, it's really hard. It's really hard to go through. It's hard for your players. It's hard for everybody because you put so much into it. How did you deal with it? Nothing. You just got to sit in it. Um, you know, you obviously watch. You obviously, um, you know, kind of soul search. What you bring out of it is you, you figure out who's really behind you. And then you figure out that you've done some really good things. Because what it'll get you to do is think you've got to change a lot, when in reality you don't. You know what I mean? Because we're doing some really good things, you know, within our conference. We're doing some really good things non-conference. We've had success in the NCAA tournament, getting the Sweet 16s, multiple ones, and uh, Elite 8s. But we haven't got over that hump. But when you have teams that can make those moves, and then you have those losses, man, it's, it's really hard to take. So, uh, you know, you've got to separate the emotion from really factual information that can help your team. Now, if you're changing your team, now you've got to dive into that element. You know what I mean? We're not changing our team. You know, we have a lot of the pieces back from last year, so it makes you feel good about it, but it also makes your guys feel good once you kind of go through it. You know, I think that's the piece of it. You know, it's, it's an exercise in pain, um, but also you're hoping it's, you know, it's going to be an exercise of happiness at the end of the day. With the pieces you have added with Miles, with Lance, and then obviously with Cam, right. and guys like that, do you feel like those are the missing pieces you didn't have last year that can help you do some different things? Yeah, well, we, were, um, we, we weren't we were short on substance um, or ability. We were short on athleticism and quickness. Um, but we had the right people. I think sometimes that gets lost because now you'll go and get those physical attributes, but then you won't have the same people. And so, like, I've always kind of recruited that way especially in the last nine, 10 years, is make sure you have the right guy. And I think you see that with us having the fewest amount of transfers in and out um, of any high major in the country. It's because people want to get their education here. People made a, you know, a good decision in terms of processing things. Like you should bump heads in recruiting with the same people that are like you. So when you recruit somebody and they have four or five different people, they really don't have a standard of what they're doing and we probably should get out of that. Um, because it's not a talent game, it's a production game. But you have to have size, you have to have quickness, you have to have athleticism, you have to have skill. You know, so you have to have you know, those attributes to, to really put your team together. But if you don't have the makeup and the substance from the people, you know, normally those teams crumble. It's a pretty and big step made defensively last season. What's the next frontier there? Where can you be better? Who's that, our team? You, Purdue. Oh, Purdue, okay. Um, yeah, you know, we had more talent from athleticism the year before. Um, we didn't have a great one to do on that end. I thought last year our guys did a great job. You know, we were one of the best um, offensive teams in the country um, against the top 100 in the country. I think we were the number one efficient offensive team against everybody we ended up being 12, which makes no sense, right? Um, makes absolutely no sense. Uh, but that's what we did. Um, I thought we made big jump. Like we were in the 80s the previous year and we ended up like 22 or 23, but we ended up 14 against the top 100. Once again, it makes no sense, right? We're better against better competition. Um, but that's just a, I, I thought our guys really worked hard at it. I thought we did a lot of 
good things on that end. And I thought Zach got better as a defender. You know, I thought his ball screen defense was better. I thought his post defense was better. Um, we're the number one team in the country in, in fewest fouls. So, and, and we got fouled a lot. So we're the number one country also, team in the country in free throw disparity. So we, you know, we committed the fewest amount of fouls and we got fouled a lot. So you're stealing a lot of points there on the free throw line. So that's something for us that can't change. You know, we have to keep doing that. And when you do things of that nature and you do positive things offensively, it helps you defensively. And so where we get into a, a problem is when, when we turn the basketball over and we shoot a high volume of threes with a low percentage, like we struggle no matter what the scenario is. Mm -hmm. And like that's what you got to try to minimize. But everybody struggles in that, you know, when you say someone had a bad game, you go look at a box score. You normally stare at some. You normally stare at turnovers. You normally stare at a lack of rebounding, you know, and things of that nature. Because you lose that possession battle and you turn the basketball over a lot, you're going to be in trouble. It seemed like ball pressure would be an emphasis this year. Yeah, you know, we, we don't turn people over yeah. um, very much, and um, so if you're going to be average to above average and taking care of the basketball, and then you're poor in forcing turnovers, which we were. Like now you're not getting as many possessions as you want, even though we're, where we get our possessions is on the offensive glass. We get a lot of offensive rebounds. So, but if you take care of the ball and you get offensive rebounds, you know, you're, you're really going to help yourself. Then you start forcing turnover. So I don't think we're going to be, we have some guys like Miles and Cam that he mentioned, um, you know, that give us that length on, on the wing. We just got to be more active. We got to be more active with our hands um, without getting out of defensive position because we, we have to be able to, turn people over at times. Yeah, you, it's, hey, been, it's been your, you, you talked about living in it after last year. Yeah. What's been your approach with the players on that? Because yeah. the honest approach is, you know, right. what happened happened. Yeah. Obviously, you don't want that ghost out of the closet too much in the coming season, though. Right. How, how do you kind of handle that dynamic with them? Yeah, well, a lot of times when people say things and they, they, they get bogged into it, like you got to look at the, the validity of it. Like, it's true. Like, you know what I mean? I think you got to get over that hurdle first. Like, you want to like dismiss everything and push everything to the side. But that's not the case. Like we got beat by St. Peter's in the Sweet 16. You know, we got beat by Farley Dickinson in the first round. Like, you know, sit in it, but don't run, don't run from anything. You know, you always face things. I think when you face things, it's, it's harder, but that's, you know, what kind of brings the demons out and really helps you because now you have a little bit more drive. Now you're a little bit more focused. Um, just the more attention to detail than anything. So we discussed it when we got back. We took a bus trip back and just talked about all the great things that we did last year, but um, that happened. When we got back in the summer, we, we met and we talked about it. Like when we got here in the fall, like we discussed it. I don't think it's anything that we're gonna put away. We'll get asked about it a lot. So that, that, I think you guys will do your part, making sure we, we keep talking about it. But it is a storyline. Like sometimes like you guys search out a narrative that really isn't there. It'd make for a good story if it was true, but you're trying a little bit too hard. Well, this is here and it's true. And so like, you know, use it as motivation and but be honest about things. Like as a, as a, as a coach, um, you're always trying to help your players, but you can fix yourself a lot better than you can fix somebody else. So that's what I always talk about. Like when we're messed up, like make sure I'm fixing like what I'm seeing and what I'm doing. Because a lot of times you do things that you know wins in this league, but it might not be the best for your personnel. So like people don't know how to like sometimes adjust to somebody like Zach. Like it's a hard adjustment because they can't have him in practice. So like now if you can't get to where you adjust to him, like we're not gonna go away from that. Like we're gonna stay with that. But then sometimes there's difficulties there for us where we got more, you know, we got a lot more weapons too. So I think the balance will really help us. You know, I think Trey Kaufman wins improvement. Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer going into their sophomore years. Um, and just finding, because every one of those guys can shoot, but just kind of finding that collection of individuals um, that are going to play and shoot with confidence. Because we collectively kind of lost our confidence at the end of the year. Even though we won five games in a row before we got beat, we still were, if you go look at our percentages, they weren't very good. Um, but we played hard. Um, and in a couple of those games, we just didn't turn the ball over. You know, if we don't turn it over, and even if we do shoot a low percentage, we're, we're a pretty good offensive rebounding team. We're going to keep coming at you and getting those possessions. Now, so, about Trey Goffman, Ryan, you talked a little bit over the offseason about yeah. playing him with Zach. Mm -hmm. um, how does that fit into the things you've been talking about with you know defense and then obviously yeah. he rebounds and, and yeah. quickness and athleticism? Yeah, well, I think the other two guys have done a really good job for us, first of all. Like Mason Gillis and Caleb First have been really good players for us. But at the end of the year, 
and this is where you go back and evaluate. If we don't foul at the end of those two games, like we're holding people in the 50s, like that should be enough, you know, to win a basketball game, right? Especially when you have one of the better offensive teams in the country, but yet it wasn't. You know, and so like to me, it's like here's a guy that can really score the basketball, and I'm playing in 10 to 12 minutes. And so like even though there might be other people on your team that defend better, you know, can you put somebody out there that can just simply get baskets for you, especially in those kind of situations? So just looking to try to you know amp up what we're trying to do offensively. I think he's a great rebounder. I think he's a really good low post player. He can play on the perimeter. He can dribble into post moves. So. Um, I think he really, you know, benefited. You know, he led us in scoring on our trip, um, but Zach also wasn't there. But we've played him, and we'll play him about a third of the time in practice, you know, at that position. I think it gives us that weapon, but we're also not going to neglect the other two guys and their strength. So, but he definitely will have more of a role on our team. He's really, he's really done well. What were the conversations like about Zach coming back when you were talking to him just kind of through the process? Yeah. Well, I didn't talk to him a lot through it. I always back up in those situations because I think it's important. I think it's hard for people to understand, especially people that root for your team, that you just want what's best for them. Because you look at it when you play college basketball, and I wasn't a very good player, you'd love to be in that position, right? So you just want him to fulfill his dream. Um, one of the things that really jumped out was – he was going to get drafted. He was going to probably get a minimum contract. But he'd spend a lot of the time in the G League, which a lot of young guys do. He needs to play basketball games. You know, this is the seventh year of organized basketball. You know, he needs to play. And so where is he going to make the most improvement? Well, you can argue where well, he is the best player in the country last year. But you could argue he's the most improved player too, right? I mean, I think that's a, a pretty good argument. So why would you want to take him out of the environment where he improved and take him to that environment, which – he could improve there too, right? But, you know, why risk that? And uh, I don't think he's done being a kid either. He really enjoys it. I know he missed uh, going on our trip because he's with the Canadian national team, but I think he, you know, he really wanted to be with us also. And, uh, but no, I just tried to gather facts and kind of where he was going to land and where he would be. And so. It's just kind of a load management day for him after his busy summer. He got a concussion. He got hit the other day, so he's out. Same as last year. Huh? Same, Same as, as last, last year. year. Yeah, they said, shows you how much I know. Like, they said that, and I forgot and that happened last year. <laughs> so. Matt, do you remember what you were doing and where you were when, uh, when Zach decided to come back? Um, 